So Lee code 1808 maximize the number of nice divisors. So in this problem you need to return the maximum possible amount of nice divisors of every number, of any number, that has at most pf prime factors. So pf is your input, you need to output the biggest possible amount of nice divisors of any number that has at most pf prime factors. And a nice divisor is a divisor of n that is also divisible itself by all of the prime factors of n. Okay, so in the example here, pf is 5 and the output is 6 and n is 200. So n is just equal to 2 to the power of 3 times 5 to the power of 2. And the amount of nice divisors is 6. These are the nice divisors of 200. Okay, so that is the maximum. Okay, so I've actually written here a little proof that makes this problem into the easier problem. It's actually a medium problem called integer break. So it's absolutely crucial, it's absolutely a prerequisite to this problem, having solved and understood the problem called integer break. And I have it on my channel, so you can go and watch the video about that. And you won't understand anything here if you haven't solved that problem. So that wouldn't be my fault, it would be your fault, because you haven't watched that video or solved that problem yourself before. Okay, so now assuming that you already know the solution to integer break, let's get into the proof. So any number can be represented as its prime factorization. This is common knowledge. So that's just a bunch of prime numbers multiplied together with possibly powers, so some exponents. So for example, here you have two to the power of five, of three, sorry, two to the power of three, times 5 to the power of 2. That's okay. So what is the number of nice divisors of a number with a certain prime factorization? It turns out that the result is just the multiplication of all of its powers in the factorization. So here, for example, you have exponent of 3, 2 to the power of 3, and here you have an exponent of 2, 5 to the power of 2, and in fact, the total number of nice divisors is 6, which is 3 times 2. Now, why is that? If you look at the definition of a nice divisor, you can see that the nice divisor needs to be divisible by every prime factor of n. So, the smallest nice divisor is always just going to be the product of all of the prime factors without any power, right? So, for example, the smallest one here is 2 times 5, and that's it. And if you had some other uh, nice divisor, then it would have to also be divisible by 2 and 5. So then what makes the nice divisors different is the exponent. So that's where the multiplicity comes in. So you always have at least 1, 2 and 1, 5, but now you also have, for example, 2 times 2. So that makes the number different from the previous one. So now you can see that to make a lot of different nice divisors, you need a number with a lot of powers in their prime factorization, okay? For example, here I can take 2 times 5, or I could take 2 times 2 times 5, or 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, and those would all be nice divisors. So I could take uh, 1 out of 3 powers of 2, and 1 out of 2 powers of 5. So I have three choices for two and two choices for five and all of them, any combination of these two choices makes a nice divisor. So by simple rules of combinatorics, I can then derive the formula that the total amount of nice divisors is just the product of all of the exponents of the prime factorization. Okay, so now we have this, which might be helpful later on. Now from the problem statement, we know that our input, pf, is the highest possible amount of prime factors of our number n. So this gives us an upper bound to the sum of all of the exponents. For example, here prime factor is 5, so the sum of the exponents of the prime factors must be at most 5. And in fact here we have 2 to the power of 3 and 5 to the power of 2, so the sum of their exponents is 5. Okay, so now we can also write this this formula here. So we know that the sum of the exponents needs to be less than n. And we want to have the biggest possible amount of nice divisors. And we know that the amount of nice divisors is just the multiplication of all of the exponents. So now 
we've come up with an equivalent problem to the original one. So it's literally the same problem and you need to really convince yourself about this before continuing any further. So we just need to find the maximum product of some amount of numbers such that the sum of all of these numbers is less than the input, is less than prime factors, pf. Okay, so now if you've convinced yourself of this, then the remaining problem, the, the body of the function is literally the same thing as the problem called integer break. So go ahead and watch that or solve that yourself, I don't care. T come here, come back here only when you've already solved that or you won't understand anything, anything here. Okay, so this is literally the same as that problem except three differences. So the first difference is that the constraints here are much larger. So integer break has like, uh, the upper bound is like 50. And here we have like 10 to the power of nine. So this causes that we need to use big integers. So we cannot just use normal integers or we'll have overflows, loss of precision. So we need to use big integers. So that is the first difference. Then the second difference is that the problem statement asking us, is asking us to do modulo of the result. So this is the second difference. And the third difference is that in the integer break problem, you're asked to use at least two factors always. So instead of having this, you have the same thing, but you also have the constraint, you need to use at least two factors. Here, we don't have that. So it's the same problem with these three differences. And the solution reflects that. So the solution is literally the same thing as integer break, so you have the three cases, except that we use a special function that does the power while also doing the modulo inside, right? Because we know that we're going to take the modulo, so why not do it while we take the power? So while we do the exponentiation, right? It's a little optimization. And then the second difference is that we're using big integers instead of normal numbers. And the third difference is that we're taking the modulo, right? So yeah, that's it. Uh, so I'll just go quickly through the logic. So I'll submit the solution to share it works, first of all, so that you can convince that it in instead indeed works. And I'm going to go through quickly the logic of the integer break problem. So why are we using factors of three? You see that we're using the biggest possible amount of factors three possible. Now, why is that? The reason is that three is kind of the best number since it's the closest one to e, which would be the best one, but it's not an in integer, so we cannot use that. So we use three instead, if we can. So the ideal case is where the modulo with three of our number is zero. And in that case, we can use only threes. So all of our prime numbers are going to have an exponent of three. That's the best solution. But if our prime factor is not divisible by three, then unfortunately one of our prime numbers is going to have to be with a multiplicity of four. So this is the best that we can do if the prime factors are not divisible by three. So the, the, the our input is not divisible by three. And then the second case here, now why are we multiplying by four? Uh, that's because we're instead, instead of dividing by three, we're dividing by three and then taking away one. So we're basically sacrificing one prime number with multiplicity of three, and instead we're making one with multiplicity of four. So we have a modulo of one, so we don't want that to go to waste. That would be a really big waste. So instead we sacrifice a three, we put it together. So we put the three and the one together and we now made a four, right? And so we multiply everything by four and we sacrifice one prime number with multiplicity of three. And the only case remaining is when the modulo with three is two. And in that case, all you have to do is the same thing as here, except that you also have one prime number with an exponent of two. So once again, if you don't understand this, it's completely normal. You need to look or solve the problem integer break before, and then you will understand this. And just one more thing about the power. So the time complexity here is logarithmic because we're using power through exponentiation. So at every step, if the exponent of your number is even, you can instead square your current result and that will cause your exponent to be halved. So that is just normal 
um, properties of exponents and powers, right? And if, if instead your exponent is not even, so it is odd, then you can just perform one multiplication and that will cause it to become even, of course. So yeah, that's it for me today. Thank you for watching and bye.